Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Recently in the last update the Dutch tier 10, well super cruiser really if we're going to be honest, the Gouden Liu has received her legendary module. So let's take a look at the Gouden Liu's legendary module shall we? Uh, it is the ship to shore radio which uh, returns, uh, which reduces the uh, reload time for the airstrike and gives you an additional airstrike and uh, in re uh, the price you pay is a 5% reduction in the damage that you're actually doing to bombs. So the idea being that you can't fit as many bombs because you're just shuttling, <laughs> shuttling uh, airstrikes across from the mainland. Uh, this uh, occupies slot 1 which you would otherwise usually uh, use for the airstrike modification 1 but this obviously supersedes the airstrike modification 1 by a fair margin because well, uh, while well, the airstrike modification that you normally get uh, uh, gives you 8% re reduced reload time, this one gives you 20% reduced reload time and an additional airstrike. Now, the Gauden Leo, if you're not familiar with the airstrike mechanic, uh, the Gauden Leo stock uh, gets, I believe, two airstrikes. So uh, we, we can quickly test that because if we're selling this equipment piece and then we're looking back, then there you see two airstrikes. Uh, these airstrikes have a, a range of just under, t under 10 kilometers and uh, take over a minute to reload. So 64 seconds and two airstrikes. Bomb damage 822 or 23. And then if we put that back in and there we go. Uh, yeah, you can purchase these for 5,000 gold or for 250,000 free XP. So it's a good reason to save up your free XP if you don't want to spend gold for it. So with that we get three airstrikes. Uh, the damage goes down to 780, but the reload goes down to just over 50 seconds. Now the big question, is it worth it? Should you get it? Uh, you pay a small price in terms of damage. It's not massive in my opinion, and it's it feels like it's definitely worth it. The big problem, however, of the Gauden Leo uh, has sort of been the lack of range, because this is a tier 10 supercruiser. This thing is the size of a battleship, uh, but it has the armor of a cruiser, or lack thereof, really, and uh, as such is uh, effectively a large citadel piñata for things like Vermonts and Yamatos and other things that like to shoot at you. And the big problem that you have in the Gauden Leo is that if you want to get anything done uh, with these 200, uh, with these very good uh, German 283mm guns, this is the, these are the guns that you find on the Shan Horse at tier 7. Uh, you gotta get into 12 kilometer range. And if you want to get your airstrikes on target, you have to get to into under 10 kilometers of range. If the enemy ship is st sitting still or sailing towards you. If the enemy ship is sailing away from you, you probably have to get, given the time it takes for the airstrike to arrive, somewhere within 8 kilometers of it. Which uh, at tier 10 in a ship that size and that lack of armor is effectively suicide range. So this does not address the general shortcoming that the Gauden Leo has, which is the lack of range on anything really. Because neither with the guns nor the airstrikes you can make yourself particularly useful unless you are sitting well, bef well in front of your line, depending on which server you're playing on, probably in front of the destroyers. <laughs> so... Um, Let's let's put everything money can purchase into the Gauden Leo, shall we? Uh, we've got the historical camo, which gives us hit points, which is great. 4% range, which is very good. So imagine playing this without the historical camo. These 12 kilometers are with the historical camo. Uh, large cover AA range, which is nice, given that these are AA ships. And torpedo damage reduction, which nobody cares about. Uh, it would have been nice if it had given us uh, main gun dispersion. Instead, given that we can't use the uh, slot 1 for the main guns and that the airstrike is sitting in slot 1 instead of torpedo damage reduction. But it is what it is. And um, yes, I am building for I am building completely for concealment because uh, you have to find positions in this ship from which you can operate. And the commander is uh, the Reuter, who has uh, an improved air defense expert, an improved sonar, an improved extinguisher, an improved honor seeker and a, he's got a lot of skills a special skill they'll call it the dying flying the dying flutchman yeah <laughs> i'm sorry sorry netherlands we love you all the flying dutchman <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Need a second. <laughs> okay, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Deep breath. <laughs> Which gives us an additional 8% um, squadron speed. So this is not the reload. This is actually the flying speed of the squadron. And uh, you don't need the aerobatic maneuvers on, on the Dutch cruisers because, well, your aircraft squadrons don't return, at least not to you. They, they, go back to the, they go back to wherever land base they came from. So it doesn't matter because you're never getting them back. It doesn't affect the recharge of the consumables. So, uh, yeah, you don't need to do that one. But this is a um, this is the Gouden Leo, a golden lion f fitted out with everything money can buy. So let's see her in action in tier 10. Uh, we are very obviously in a tier 10 battle against uh, Midway, Kurfürst, Monty, Minnesota, uh, San Martin and uh, Worcester and Z52, base capture on Hourglass. I like Hourglass. I know a lot of people don't, but I love this map. It's got some really good angles and if the enemy team isn't supporting their flanks, something like, like this ship can play really well al along, the, along the flank lines. Unfortunately, if the enemy team does support their flanks, then things don't go so well. Uh, but uh, we, given that we have uh, given that we have uh, a carrier in play, uh, let's go. We can make ourselves also useful in terms of uh, AA duty. We do have a daring and a vampire too, who are no slouches in that regard as well. But um, yeah, still. Oh yeah, I, I am spawning on the on the correct side. So you see these islands there, uh, effectively to my right. Uh, that's where I like to play. These islands are perfect if the enemy team doesn't support the flank. The first island there, hey Monty, that first island there uh, can give you can give you vision. Uh, okay, can, can block enemy vision from the central area if they're not scouting the flanks. And unfortunately, it's a carrier battle. But uh, this is also, by the way, why you definitely want the oh, concealment okay. module in this thing, because otherwise you get spotted early and you're well within range of the long of the battle line in the enemy capture circle. So parking yourself behind this island here, if there's nothing coming around the flank, generally means that you can stay undetected while shooting over it. And uh, given that I have absolutely no intent of being sp spotted more than necessary, I'm going to park myself on this and see what's coming through. Well, there's a battleship stacking back there, but it's not going anywhere. Now, unfortunately, here comes the carrier to spoil the fun. So I'm going to be air spotted, but I can give some AA support to Monty. And... Uh, also, this means that if you're sticking behind the island, this means the the carrier can't drop me because uh, he doesn't have the, the space so he can drop ahead of me <laughs> or he would have to fly over me and drop me from the other side, which means that uh, this sort of negates a lot and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the firepower because he would, lose his, he would lose his strike wing if he did that. Now, Vampire has caught up with us and uh, is getting ready to scout on the right flank, so uh, I am... Happy to, yep, that's a San Martin, shots out, but unfortunately I think I'm too far away again. Um, friendly carrier has ca caught the fighters, uh, Monty can take care of that. But the San Martin is an obvious problem for the uh, for the Vampire 2 here that we have. So uh, we are going to use the armor piercing against the Minnesota because that's what we had loaded. Because these guns on the armor piercing are nice, and this is another gripe that I have that you uh, that the Reuters uh, skill is is uh, in the same slot as APCS because I really want APCS on these ships. And here we see, you see that I'm going to be able to. That's the fire. Now I'm going to wait for the Damacon and send the second strike wing out. So by the time that gets there, Damacon should be cooled down, and I've got the HE loaded, precise aim up, and uh, go go perma fires. That's what we're trying to go for here. And of course, absolutely no perma fires, and the Minnesota can very much hurt me in return. But now I have the third airstrike. Um, assuming that he sees the torpedoes and is going to go forward, so uh, pause. Uh, uh, positioning, but now I'm I'm within range of Mo uh, both Monty and uh, and the enemy carrier, so I have nowhere to go. I need to rush forward, and yeah, the, uh, two, still took a torpedo. Obviously a obviously a flood, which means now I've already lost so many hit points because obviously I'm too far ahead. And that uh, yeah, and there comes Montana, <laughs> and that was almost the game for me at this point. And that sort of is the problem if you want to play effectively. Uh, you do need to get ahead very quickly. Now what I could have played differently here would have been to get closer to the island, just park myself there and just play purely on the airstrikes. But it's kind of a shame to 
to let uh, these uh, to let these uh, 280 millimeter guns to go to waste anyway uh, San Martin I'm not sure if he's going to go further forward but I am backing off at this point waiting for my heel and there comes Monty but he's completely missed uh, back to the armor piercing against the San Martin and uh, yeah the vampire obviously has a pro uh, Friendly Montana, uh, there's a San Martin over there. If you wouldn't mind, push a little bit. There's nothing here. There's no destroyer here, and you're leaving it to the cruiser to uh, to to make something happen on the flank here, and and to take point. That is really not how you want to play this ship. Ideally, the friendly Montana would have pushed up aggressively here, and would have taken some of the beating, rather than uh, letting me go. But uh, I'm now I'm now stuck in stuck in behind the island. I'm unspotted, and uh, my first airstrike is coming off cooldown again. So given that San Martin is going forward, we're gonna drop it over there. The problem with the airstrikes is, and now I'm air spotted again. Uh, that means I have to go defensive against Monty. Fr friendly Monty is finally pushing up. Uh, obviously, the enemy Montana is trying to get me killed. Airstrike clipped the San Martin. So I'm going to try and uh, get him killed. But fortunately, uh, the friendly Thundra has paid attention and has actually taken down um, taken down the San Martin. And finally, the friendly Montana is, uh, is pushing up the, la uh, the flank here after uh, we have eliminated, uh, to the cost of most of my hit points, everything else. <laughs> And uh, now we're going to uh, disassemble the enemy Monty because he is, has run out of support. And that's where the armor-piercing shells are really, really good. But I do have to take care uh, that uh, I am not getting, I'm not getting shot at by Monty because I'm still very low on hit points. I can probably risk it. I'm gonna go for another airstrike here. But uh, I would love to, I'd love to get that Montana killed. Uh, on the quick if possible. I got another heal coming off and the airstrike getting going in. I'm giving an awful lot of broadside but I'm hoping that the Montana is going to shoot at someone else. Uh, there comes the there comes the carrier to spoil the fun and again we're doing the same thing although there are no torpedo bombers it's the American dive bombers that we have to worry about here. Still uh, we are shooting down a fair amount of airplanes and now that was my last heal. I'm down to 5,000 hit points and um, but we have we have pretty much uh, we have pretty much won the battle. So the the big issue still with the Chaun Leo is that you cannot rely on the airstrikes alone to uh, to do the damage because they just don't. Up Oops, that's a Worcester. Uh, I've got the armor piercing loaded, but I don't have enough health to kill that thing. Uh, well, crap. Uh, let's get the airstrike out. Where are you going, Worcester? Left, right, center. Uh, probably straight ahead, maybe? Uh, no, Worcester is turning. Yeah, he's turning. Okay, the airstrike's gonna miss. That means the Worcester is gonna kill me. Because again, Montana is way too, way too much uh, behind here to do anything sensible. We can get a couple of shots into him still, but uh, I am very much gonna die to Worcester here. Yeah, so my big problem with the Chauden Liu is uh, that she lacks the range to play effectively if your team is too defensive because from the back lines where you want to play in a ship that size and that vulnerability you don't really have um, you don't really have the, the the range to hit anything from the front lines you are very exposed and it's it's very easy for the for the enemy team to you know uh, make make very short work of you so and this is getting reasonably close the midway has managed to actually still kill uh, still kill the vampire too but i think we are running out of uh, he is running out of time and he has not managed to kill the montana in time so um is the third airstrike uh, making this a better ship absolutely and i think with the legendary module the airstrike mechanic is actually viable now with the howden leo uh it it's still a very, very situational ship because if you are getting into positions from where you can uh, fire, from where you can be protected and and you know use your get, actually get your guns to work, and if you can get into positions from where you can effectively use the airstrikes, then uh, yes, she absolutely she's she, she works. I I'd, I'd say she works oh, she works well. If you if you given if you're given the opportunity, but uh, if your team plays defensively and you effectively have to play at the front lines, it's a very difficult ship to play, uh, just because you're lacking the range to make anything happen. So, uh, if there are any buffs in the works, I would appreciate an, an extra kilometer range on the airstrikes potentially, or on 
preferably even on the guns because I'd be more than happy to use the, these are 280 millimeter guns and she's barely got more range than a Des Moines. Uh, I would love to have a 13 kilometer range on these guns and I think she deserves that uh, because that would that would probably that would totally turn uh, turn a style around and and enable you to play more conservatively early on until you're in position and uh, do the things that you do. But uh, it's a good start and I think it's a it's a worthy legendary module if you are enjoying this kind of ship and this kind of playstyle. And that's it for me today. Thanks everybody and I will see you next time. Bye bye.